What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 20 and today we are returning with a brand new episode in season 2 of Aston Villa after we began the new campaign in the last episode, winning our pre-season final and uh, making two new signings to the five new arrivals on pre-contracts as well. So in today's episode what we're going to do is play our first game of the season competitively, that's the Premier League opening day at home to Arsenal and also play the first leg of our Europa League qualifier which is against Ore Bro SK. Uh, a Swedish side and the first leg is also at Villa Park as well. We also might make one or two more signings as well. Uh, lots to get through today but the first thing we're going to do is change the squad numbers of a few of our new signings. I briefly touched on it in the last episode. Uh, Rain is fine number one but there's a lot of numbers I just don't really think suit the players. Cameron Carvings can keep free to McGill but Young is not going to be four. I'm going to change that to seven because that's what he wore at Aston Villa before he left to join Manchester United. Ross Barkley I'm going to give number eight because that's what he's now wearing for Chelsea and what of course he wore for Everton as well so Lansbury would have to change to number four uh we'll also change Yaya Torres to 42 which is what he wore at Manchester City and also the final number is Fernando Torres and guess what number I'm giving El Nino of course it's going to be number nine and uh, he'll take Ross McCormack's number as well that's that's a lot better that looks much much better but uh, just on the uh briefly touching on some of the players here uh, you might be wondering what player is going to be retiring next season uh, after the uh the saga of John Terry's surprise retirement. I thought I'd better show you. Uh, Pepe Reina is retiring come the end of the season, as is uh, Clint Dempsey and Yaya Torre. Both of those players are retiring. Where's Torre? There he is. Both of those players are retiring at the end of the season. And I'm pretty sure that Young isn't retiring, but Torres is. So, yeah, three of our five new arrivals on pre-contracts are only here for the year. And that's why I'm not that fussed about putting them on quite expensive salaries, because they're only going to be here for a year. They'll do quite well for us, hopefully. And, uh, and then they're gone. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so in today's episode, we might make one or two more signings. I'm not too sure, but we'll definitely play the uh, the first two games of the season. So uh, let's advance and see what comes first. Actually, one thing we can do is uh, get the training set up to begin with and, uh, and get this sorted for the new season. One thing I'm going to do is train Joel Turner and uh, also the young man Lewis as well, Toby Lewis, who's in our academy right now, because these are our two brightest youth prospects. And I want to get into 60 overall so we can find out just how good these kids are. But um, yeah, I'm not sure who's going to get the bulk of the training this year. Some of you guys might notice that I don't, I don't really care about the training too much. It was a new feature introduced to FIFA 16, and it's a good feature. Don't get me wrong; it's a good way to progress your players quite nicely in the attributes. But what I normally do is I just set the five drills up, and for the vast majority of the season, those five players stay on the same drills, and I just simulate them. I'll change it a bit more this year, but um, once again, the, the training for me really—it's a good little feature. But I'm rubbish at the drills anyway, so I don't see the point in playing them. Just simulating the drills week after week is all I really do. Uh, we do have a bid here for El Mohamedy as Nottingham Forest want to take our Egyptian right-sided player. And that's not a bad bid. He's got 1.7 mil market valuation right now. He's not our contract in the summer. And he's a decent little player to have at 30 years old, but I'm not I'm not against letting him go for anything over his valuation. Right now, Bustos, of course, is our right midfielder. And uh, we know that Carlos Heel is uh, back from loan as well. We can play a Domer on the right side too. I do like El Mohamedy. I do like him a lot. It's, he's, he's a very versatile player. And he's got some decent physical stats at 30 years old as well, 85 stamina. But I'm not against letting him go. Um, do you know what? I'll accept that bid. If he wants to go to Nottingham Forest, get some first team football, totally fine with me. It's, uh, it's up to him. He can leave or he can stay. I don't mind either way. Now, we also have two more transfer offers here. A loan off for James Breen, also a bid for Galini as what for want to take our backup goalkeeper. We're going to say no to this deal. We just signed Pepe Reina. And whilst this is over the market valuation, he's a safe pair of hands as a backup. And just 23 years old as well, he's only going to get better. And uh, there was a loan off for James Bree as well. Leeds want to take him to Ellen Road on a one year deal. Obviously, a newly promoted side this year along with us in Ipswich. And I'm going to negotiate the wage split. You'll see it on the screen right now. And uh, if you want to take him on loan, totally fine with me. It's funny how the wage split is literally always 64 as well but uh, also uh, for those that were wondering who won the World Cup you can see it right there on the right hand side of your screen as Glenn Whelan's gone to Ipswich Town uh, France have been crowned winners of the World Cup beating Brazil on penalties for free uh, as they beat Germany in the semis and Argentina were knocked out by Brazil in that semi-final tie so France crowned World Cup winners 
for 2018. And also, there is some more breaking news. Glenn Whelan uh, has just been sold to Ipswich for, was it 550 grand, I think it was? Oh, and Elmo's gone as well, 425, uh, 520 grand. And uh, Elmo has indeed gone as well to Nottingham Forest, 1.8 million pounds. So two sales there, two good experienced players, both now leaving the club. And James Bree probably going to go to Leeds United as well. So as we now look at our team, two players leaving, probably three players leaving as well. It's actually a little bit thinner in uh, the defensive positions. We've got enough cover through the middle of the park. But uh, we might possibly try and sign a new right-sided or left-sided player as part of our 3-5-2. But I'm, I'm not sure. I'm okay with how it is for the time being, though. We'll just keep on advancing and see what we want to do next. And as we do advance to the first of the month, we'll now go ahead and take a look at Toby in the academy. And see if he's hit 60 overall. Yeah, I just took him out of the training to give Dale Fry and Carter Vickers some uh, some training. But Lance Griffiths looks quite good. 61 overall with 83, 89 potential. 85 ball control already. Uh, just 18 years old. Uh, Ed Davis not looking quite as good. So I'm going to go ahead and release him. Uh, and Sean Collins can still be quite good though. Left back, 6 foot 3 as well. 83, 89 potential. But Toby Lewis has now hit 60 overall. I'm going to leave him for the time being. As he's only 16 years old. And promote him after the transfer window is shut. But... I'm excited. I'm very excited. 91, 94 potential. We know he's uh, he's going to be uh, potential to be special. But three decent players in the academy. And uh, we'll lead them in there for the time being. But after the transfer window shut, they're all getting put in the first team. And right now, we're just advancing through the calendar. I don't really know what to do with the money at the moment. £20 million still remaining in our budget. But I, I quite like things how they are at the moment, if I'm being totally honest. I don't really want to mess with the, uh, the lineup too much. Um, we've, we've got enough depth to start the season off. Obviously, we'll, we'll need to improve that as the, uh, as the season goes on. But enough depth to begin with. I like the first 11 and the setup we've got right now. I, I still think we might need a new centre-back, despite signing two in the last episode. I did get a lot of transfer targets from you guys in the last episode and the episode before that. And really, I get transfer targets on every single episode, which I really appreciate. Um, and obviously, we were thinking about buying a new striker as well. But actually, I'm not too sure about that now. Obviously, with uh, Kodjia and, and Brereton and, and Torres. And a loan offer for Kodjia? Why would you even bother? No, he's not going anywhere. And um, and yeah, I'm still not sure what to do with the money. £20 million, but I'm not sure what to do. As Sunderland want Dempsey's retiring come the end of the year, but forget it. Clint is staying here. And um, and yeah, at the moment, we're just advancing. That's, that's all we're doing, just advancing to the first game of the season. So I think we'll probably just go straight into the first game against Arsenal at this rate, because I can't see anything that's going to happen until now. Middlesbrough want Ross McCormack, 1.85 million. I'm, I'm just going to accept a bid. I was going to sell McCormack anyway. So yeah, that's, that's fine with me. McCormack can go to Riverside. Totally fine with that. But this is really weird. Like, we've got the money we were looking for now. £20 million in the budget, but I don't... I don't need to sign anyone, and I don't want to sign anyone for the sake of it either. But I have just seen an email here, which is a little bit disappointing for me, because I was keeping this as a secret, but some of you guys have been commenting him, and uh, I did put him in my shortlist. Hamburg want to take Christian Benteke, as you know, I put in a bid for Galini, but again, we're going to say no, as I'd like to keep him here as our backup goalkeeper for Reina. Hamburg are putting a bid for Benteke, and he is on the shortlist, and I definitely would like to bring this guy back to Villa Park, but... I'm not sure it's worth it. You know, goals weren't that much of a problem for us last season. And he is going to cost us around £20 million. Oh, I'd love to bring him back. I think it would be brilliant if I could bring him back. But I just, I don't want to spend, like, all of our budget on a striker that we don't really need. I'll, I'll put in a bid. I'll test the water. But I'm not too sure about this. What we're going to do is put in a valuation bid for Christian Benteke. Don't forget Ross McCormack is likely to leave. Uh, which means we'll get a little bit, just a little bit of money for that, uh, for that sale. Um, but if we if we sign Benteke even for under his, uh, even for just close to his market valuation, we're not going to have any more money to do anything else. And again, depth is the major concern here at Aston Villa with the Europa League to come. So I'll put in a valuation bid. But if they want something like twenty million pounds, forget it. Yeah, twenty two point nine million pounds. We can't afford that anyway. So it, it was a nice thought. It was a lovely suggestion. Benteke back to Villa Park, but not in season two. Maybe later down the line, but not in season two. Oh, and I've jinxed the McCormack sale as well. Damn it. That's one of the very few players on the transfer list this season. But he doesn't want to get a Middlesbrough transfer talks breakdown. So that's a bit of a shame. So we're still here for the time being. 
But um, yeah, we're still yet to do anything, so I think we're just going to dive straight into the first game of the season. It's Arsenal at home. Let's uh, let's get straight to it. All right, so here we go. First game back in the Premier League for Aston Villa as we play host to Arsenal Wenger's Arsenal. And I would definitely take a point in match day one. Just don't want to lose our undefeated home record on the first game of the season, so I would definitely take a point in this game. We're, of course, playing the 3-5-2 with Rayner in goal, back three of Chester Fry and Palmer Brown, now midfield five. is Green on the left, Bustos on the right, Torre, who is going to wear the armband, along with Ross Barkley in the DM area and Grealish to Cam, Kodja and Brereton to strike duo, and as for Arsenal's team, they are playing a 5-2-3 with a really deadly attack, Gelson Martins on the right, Alexis Sanchez on the left-hand side, and Olivier Giroud, the striker as well. So first game, match day one, it's Arsenal at home, I'll take a point, but let's see if we can get a win. Chester, through to Grealish, and maybe our first chance could fall early as Grealish turns and finds Ben Brereton, and Brereton's going to need a teammate here, so I'll pop it out wide towards Andre Green, and Green has Sanchez tracking back. He'll try and turn and cut inside. Finds Jack Grealish. Grealish inside to Ben Brereton. Oh, it's the perfect start for Aston Villa. Ben Brereton, last season with 11 goals in the championship season, gets our first in the Premier League, 14 minutes in, with our first attack. What a start. Lovely little move that too. Green to Grealish to Ben Brereton. Three of our hottest young prospects, all linking up. Doesn't take a touch. Just bends one past David Ospina and into the back of the net. Aston Villa won. Arsenal no nil. Perfect start of Villa Park. Come on. Green back to Yaya Torre. And Torre to Ross Barkley. Looks to find Brereton. Does. Brereton inside. Grealish face to shoot. Oh. Just off target. We've been a much better team in this first half. Still leading by one, but I want a second. One of my biggest problems is I just don't put games to bed when I know I can. At the moment, it is all Aston Villa. We just need to keep it up. If we get one more clear-cut chance, we have to make sure we take it. Arsenal is such a good team. We know they're going to come at us at some point in the second half. So if we get another chance, we have to take it. There's Giroud finding Sanchez, who is through, and puts it just wide the post. Come on, let's not surrender our lead here in match day one. Grealish on the ball, gets around his man, looks to play through Kodja. It's Jonathan Kodja. Oh, lovely from Kodja. Oh, yes, Jonathan Kodja winning the golden boot last season. Gets his first in the Premier League as well. Aston Villa 2, Arsenal 0. We targeted 15 goals from last season, ended with 21. I'm going to set the same target this year as well. I know it's a higher division, a much tougher one, but I'm targeting 15 goals for Jonathan Kodja. We really like him. He's quick, he's strong, and he's got a great finish on him as well. Two in Aston Villa, perfect first half. Well, Arsenal don't have a great record on opening days in recent years. I'm pretty sure they've only won like two of their last five, two of their last six. And uh, they did win this season against Leicester, but at the moment, they're, they're not going to be winning this one, that's for sure. We're leading by two. And surely, on course for the three points. Do we score from here? It definitely will be three points. Kodja to Brereton. Bears down on goal. Oh, Spina, what a save. Keeps Arsenal in the game. Fabulous stop by the Colombian. Chester to Torre. And now Barkley looking for Brereton. Finds him. Out wide is Bustos. We've played some brilliant football in this game. As Bustos finds Brereton. Through to Grealish. Gives it him back. This should be... 3-0. I couldn't round off Spina, but it did not matter. Ben Brereton bags a brace on the opening day. We know how good this guy was last year. When he got injured against Fulham, our season almost fell apart. But he scored two on the opening day in the Premier League. This is the guy to watch this year. Brereton slots it home. I tried to round off Spina. It didn't work. It doesn't matter, though. 3-0. Points in the bag. One thing I will have to say about Arsenal and FIFA, though, is that they are such an easy team to beat. And it's not right. EA need to change it. Because this year, you might have noticed him. A Huddersfield save. We beat them in uh, in the last episode of Saving Braid. I uploaded yesterday as well. Arsenal are just like a really easy team to beat. And as Ashley Young is through, this could be four. Oh, it's going to go in. Ospina got a touch but couldn't keep it out. And it's a dream return for Ashley Young as well. But yeah, EA, EA need to tone up Arsenal on this game because I've beaten them so many times and they're so easy to play against as well. They're far too passive. They're far too submissive. And it just becomes really easy to stop them from breaking through just by containing them and just waiting before you win it back and hit them on the break. They're far too easy to beat in this year's FIFA. EA need to improve their ratings, no doubt. But for Young, off the bench, first goal since returning, that is absolutely perfect. What a dream return. And there is the final whistle right from kickoff as well. 
Dream return to the Premier League for Aston Villa. A 4-0 victory over Arsene Wenger's Arsenal. Their tough opening day record is going to continue. And I have to say, I was really impressed with the veterans in this game. And the boys at the back defended well too. But you'll see by the stats, we were a far better team. Because Arsenal, they just they don't want to score goals in this year's FIFA. You, you would have seen it through multiple saves I've done uh, in, in this year's FIFA. EA need to improve the... Well, they just need to improve the team. Simple as that. Because they're not this bad. Yeah, on FIFA, they're one of the easiest teams I have to play against. But... We won by four goals to nil. Grealish with four assists. Jack Grealish with four assists. Brereton with two goals. I'm giving the team man in a match, but oh, Jack Grealish. I absolutely love four assists in one game. That is special, and that was an amazing win. What a great start. And I think it's worth saying as well that the decision to start Jack Grealish ahead of Clint Dempsey was definitely a very good one. 4-0, the final score. Grealish picking up the assist for every single goal. That is what I'm talking about. And uh, also, we can see that we've now hit the shirt sales objective already in the 19th of August when the transfer window's not even shut. I'll say it again, and I've said it before. Has anyone ever failed this objective? I don't think it's possible. And so, as we jump into the second and final game today, it's now time for the first leg of our Europa League qualifier against Orebro SK. And all I know about these guys is that they come from Orebro in Sweden, and that's literally all I know. So, forgive my ignorance, but... I am very ill-informed on how good this team is. Maybe you guys know more than me. But uh, we are playing a 3-5-2 for the game. It's a strong lineup as well. A few changes from the win over Arsenal as Torres gets his first start in an Aston Villa shirt in a competitive game. And I want a job done tonight. I want to get the win here at Villa Park, not concede an away goal, score a few goals, and now I can feel the weak inside in the second leg. So yeah, second game, it's Orebro. And let's see if the surprise package can surprise us. This has been Quick. a very bad start to the game. Still tied at 0-0. I can't break down this Swedish side at the moment, but Dempsey has found a bit of room to have, have a go. And, uh, and Janssen makes the save. And Orebro get it away. You know, normally when I face a team like this, I know one or two trivial things because, you know, I've been playing or watching football since I was... Oh, Dempsey, six years old. So I've accrued a decent amount of football knowledge, but I know nothing about these guys at all. So if anyone in the comments can uh, can give me one or two facts that I can talk about in the next episode when we face them in Sweden, please do so. But what a goal from Clint Dempsey. Jack Greeley started the last game and Dempsey says, Docs, don't forget about me, mate. I was player of the season last year. I I gave in the armband tonight, and that is a captain statement. 1 0 Aston Villa, what a goal! Hands free to Huri Hain. And Ashley Young's making a move there down the left hand side. I'll try and free him if I can. Yes, great first touch by Ashley. Can he keep it in play? Yes, he can. Oh, lovely from Young. Brilliant work. And that's not a bad delivery to Bustos arriving. Oh, yes! Aston Villa 2, OSK 0 right before the break. And that was wonderful from Ashley Young. A few raised eyebrows when we signed him on a free transfer to return to Villa Park. But he's not here to pick up a paycheck. He wants to prove the fans wrong that he is still a fantastic player. And he's going to have a great second stint here at Villa Park. Great cross, 2-0. Perfect way to start uh, to end the first half. It's been a really interesting game. We're still leading by two goals to nil, but there's not been that many chances at all. Orebro haven't really caused us any kind of problems at all. But on the other hand, we've we've scored with really our only two chances in the game. As Lansbury finds Huri Hain, but maybe a chance here for a third. Oh, I wanted to release Fernando. Couldn't do so. We'll get it back though. Young to Lansbury to Rico Henry. Storming into the area. Can he cross to the far post? Ashley Young. Oh, yes, baby. Ashley Young is back and he's back with a bang. Aston Villa 3, Orebro 0. Two goals in two games and a wonderful assist too. Young has been absolutely fantastic in this game, both on the left and now he's been drifted out to the right side after Bustos got subbed off and he's been brilliant in both of these positions. Oh and here's Torres, here's Fernando and this should be another goal. Oh well, I don't think Fernando's going to claim it. I tried to dink it over the goalkeeper and in the end it was a pretty terrible attempt but it's 4-0 and uh, the game is over now and possibly a tie over and this is what he wanted. No, Torres is going to claim it. He got past his man, he just let him go. I tried to dink it over the goalkeeper and actually did it take a deflection? I don't think it might have done. Did it? We'll see on the second replay. Does it take a nick off the defender? No, he just goes straight in. So definitely Torres is going to claim it. 4-0 Aston Villa and the tie is all but over in the first leg. 
Well, we know what we wanted to do tonight, and we've done just that. We wanted to tie basically overheading to the second leg, and that's exactly what happened. A clean sheet once again for Reina, 2-2, two and, two, and back to back 4-0 victories to start the season off for Aston Villa as well. It's the perfect start to life in the Premier League and back in Europe as well. We're going to keep ourselves grounded, not get too far ahead of ourselves, but once again, Villa Park witnesses another great display from their heroes as we get the 4-0 win. And the veterans tonight were so, so good, but man, the match will go to Young for the goal and the assist. He's been brilliant to start the season off in the first two games. And what a great sign that could prove to be. And a brilliant way to end today's episode off as well. So that will end today's episode of Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's, uh, today's double episode upload day, then please do drop a like. Much love. Have a great Saturday night. And I'll see you for the next episode. We'll hopefully make some more new signings very soon.